Good evening, YouTube. My name is Scott. Tonight, I'll be uh, reviewing the Unify Protect UNVR. I'll be going over the reason why I'm upgrading to this device. I'll look at the, a quick overview of all the external features here with you, as well as cover hopefully the migration from my existing device to this one. Now, first, why am I upgrading to this device? This is a beast of a machine. Um, what I have currently is the Unify Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus. And what I'm doing is I'm running into issues where there is a limit on the storage capacity as well as the camera limit. Now with Unify, they do rate that if you're running additional controllers on the Unify Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus, um, at best, if it's just running the Unify Protect, you can only have seven high bandwidth cameras and that's the same for the UDM Pro. Um, with this, however, you can run 15 high bandwidth cameras on this dedicated machine or 50 1080p cameras. In my case, I have a mixture of both some G3 cameras, G4 and G5 on my network. So I needed the ability to store more uh, data and have the ability to go further back in the time lapse. Now, this is a beast of a machine. Uh, it has the capability of hosting four hard drives, whether or not they're two and a half inch or three and a half inch drives. Uh, with that, that gives you the capability to have some data redundancy with some RAID configurations where I think it's pretty auto automatic on its own. Um, you'll also notice that there is a port for Unify's uninterruptible power supply, their proprietary plug. You have a one gigabit ethernet port and a 10 gigabit uh, SFP port as well as some cooling on the rear and the power, AC power in the input. Um, now with this box, I will say if you have a network rack, you want, want to make sure that there's enough space in there. In this case, this device is 13 inches deep. So I had to extend mine, make sure there's a couple inches behind it to allow for the cooling as well as the power input. Um, what I'm going to be doing is covering that migration. Now I'm hoping that when I go to migrate, I can take the export or the backup config of the Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus and put it in here as an import and uh, replace from backup. And hopefully everything will carry over as far as the camera settings, notifications, the smart detection zones, everything else that has been outlined with the existing configuration. Now I'm hoping that goes smooth. What I also want to say is uh, when you're putting this box on your network, and before you even put a hard drive in it, I would say make sure that this console gets updated. In my case, it went from like versions one to two and a half, and then it had, it had the capability to jump to version three. And I think it's best to do that before you put a hard drive in there because some of the times that update process might interfere with the drive and it's setting up or partitioning. In my case, I had an issue with my first hard drive that I put in here and I got a brand new one, a second one now from Amazon, which is the Western Digital Purple 8 terabyte. I've got that ready to go in here as well. So again, make sure you update this console before you install hard drives, just as a precaution to make sure it doesn't interrupt anything that it's doing when it tries to initialize that drive and set it up. Um, other than that, let's get this started. As I stated before you want to put a hard drive in this device, make sure it is completely up to date. You can do that by logging into the console and going over to the Unify OS that it is. Make sure you go to applications and then just make sure it's up to date. Like I mentioned here, it is on Unify NVR version three, so it's already up to date. Otherwise it'd say um, update right next to it. Um, you can also see whether or not the hard drives are connected. In that case, I have not put my hard drive in. I'm going to go ahead and do that right now and see how this behaves. So I've since put the hard drive in. It flashed a few times with the white light. Then I got a message in Unify Protect on the mobile application saying the hard drive was ready. Come into here. It also says it's healthy and ready to go. So we're ready to go on to the next step. Now for this next step, I'm going to uh, export the configuration file from my CloudKey Gen 2 Plus. 
And that I can show you, it'll be pretty easy. So you're just gonna go over to settings, download the migration file. It's gonna download that backup file. Now, what I'm gonna do is from the Unify OS console, I'm gonna go ahead and disable it because it creates quite a havoc between the two devices or the two protect controllers running on the network because I keep getting camera disconnected notifications and the cameras haven't even been adopted to the Unify NBR on the network yet. So I'm just gonna go ahead and disable it. And you can do that by uh, the three little dots up here and hitting stop. Hopefully that'll give the network a little bit of a, a breather and my phone as far as the notifications go. <clears throat> now, while that's doing that, I'm gonna go back over to the Unify video recorder itself. I'm gonna open protect and I'm going to import the configuration. says import is successful. The controller goes offline. I assume it's going to reboot with the new configuration. So this will be the true test if it's able to carry over all the uh, smart detection zones, camera settings, when to record, when not to record, notifications, etc. So it finished rebooting. I opened uh, Unify Protect. We're gonna see if we have some cameras here. It looks like they're offline. Looks like they're coming online. Here we go. Here we have some of the cameras. Um, here I have a couple to remove some of my existing ones that I uh, upgraded out to the G5 bullet. I'll do a review on that separately, but that is pretty easy. The only thing I noticed when the uh, configuration came over is it didn't bring over any of my customized views. Otherwise, it did bring over the cameras when to record. It did pick up some of the uh, smart detection zones, the recording quality. Um, so everything like that in the motion zones came across. So no having to um, reset those uh, preferences back into the controller itself. So that was pretty smooth. And so after this has been running a little bit, I'll make sure, maybe give it a day or two, uh, I'm going to probably disable and delete the, or uninstall the controller on the Unify Cloud Key Gen 2 so it can never start again. Um, that way I won't have any hiccups where cameras are hopping between controllers and being confused. Um, but that in a nutshell is how I migrated from my Unify Cloud Key Gen 2 plus to the Unify NVR, which I'm hoping is going to be a really good experience because I'm gonna have eight terabytes of storage. It can host a lot more cameras, especially the high bandwidth cameras that allow for the G4, the G4 Pro, the G5s. Um, so a lot more camera bandwidth is allowed on this uh, device, um, as well as some, maybe just even more um, compute just available for the application itself when you're scrolling through the time lapse, going through some of the other things. I know Unify is doing a really good job at putting in uh, smart detections for carbon dioxide detectors, smoke detectors. So obviously there's going to be a lot more need for compute and the things that they want to deliver as far as new features down the road. So I'm hoping this box is pretty robust in the capabilities that it can enhance and enable down the road. Um, but that's the review, it's pretty easy. I'm looking forward to this and I'll maybe come back after a while, a few days or a few weeks and give a, a slight update on the experience with the Unify NVR from there. But that's it for now.